And we're back once again at chapter 1, verse 29 of the book of First Chronicles. These are their generations. The firstborn of Ishmael, Nabaioth, then Kedar, and Abdil, and Mibsam, Mishma, and Duma, and Massa, Hadad, and Tema, Jeter, Naphish, and Kedema. These are the sons of Ishmael. Notes. Now Ishmael, Abraham's son through Hagar, through a uh, rebellious relationship, if you will, had twelve sons, as did Jacob. They were also the heads of the twelve tribes, making twenty-four tribes for, which descended from Abraham through his two sons. Uh, well, Ishmael went on to found the, uh, the Arab kingdoms, basically. And, uh, well, the Jewish people, the true Jewish people, went on and did quite a few different other things. Verse 32. Now the sons of Keturah, Abraham's concubine, she bore Zimran, and Jokshan, and Medan, and Midian, and Ishbek, and Shua, and the sons of Jokshan, Sheba, and Dedan, and the sons of Midian, Ephah, and Epher, and Henoch, and Abida, and Eldah, all of these, all these are the sons of Keturah. Verse 34. And Abraham begot Isaac. The sons of Isaac are Esau and Israel. Notes. Well, Israel should actually be, it could be translated Jacob, but we know that that changed. Now the author comes back to Isaac and his seed, Esau and Jacob, and follows the main purpose of his writing, dealing briefly with the seed of Esau first before going into the more lengthy genealogies of the seed of Jacob or Israel, if you prefer to call him that. Now, after this, he writes 12 chapters recording the genealogies of Jacob's sons to the time of Saul and David. Verse 35 The sons of Esau, Eliphaz, Reuel and Jeush and Jaalam and Korah. Notes. Now this was the actual Eliphaz found in the book of Job who was a Temanite. You can find that in Job chapter 2 verse 11 and chapter 4 verse 1. Verse 36. The son of Eliphaz, Teman and Omar, Zephi and Gadam, Kenath and Timnah and Amlek. Notes. This man who was a descendant of Esau was noted for his opposition to Israel. I'm talking about Amalek. The Amalekites were the first to attack Israel as they came out of Egypt. For this, God swore that they would have war from generation to generation and ultimately be destroyed, uh, of course, barring uh, repentance. Okay, well... If they were to repent, God would just finally just stop if they were having a true repentance. Well, this was true. They were, they were finally destroyed by Saul with the exception of a handful. And one of the reasons Saul was cut off was because he spared some of the Amalekites. You can find that in 1 Samuel chapter 15. You see, they were a symbol of the flesh ever at war with the Spirit. And God just simply could not deal with them anymore. They had to go. They were the bad guys, and they were going to be a thorn in Israel's side until all of them perished. So God had to ultimately wash his hands with them and move on. He didn't want it to be that way, but that's the way it had to happen. Verse 37. The sons of Rehul and... Uh, the sons of Rehul, Nahath, Zerah, Shema, and Mizah... And the sons of Seir were Lotan and Shobal and Zibian and Ana and Dishon and Ezar and Dishan. And the sons of Lotan were Hori, Homam, and Timna was Lotan's sister. The sons of Shobal were Alian, Manahath, and Ebal, and Shephi, and Onam. And the sons of Zibian were Aya and Anna. And the sons of Anna were Dishon, and the sons of Dishon, Amram, and Eshban, and Ethran, and Cheran. And the sons of Ezer were Bilhan, and Zavan, and Jacan, the sons of Dishan, Uz, and Aran. 
notes. We have quite a few double names in there. There's no real confusion. Now just follow the genealogy all the way down. Verse 43. Now these are the kings that reigned in the land of Edom before any king reigned over the children of Israel. Bela, the son of Beor, and the name of his city was Dinhaba. And when Bela was dead, Jobab, the son of Zerah, of Basra reigned in his steed. And when Jobab was dead, Husham of the land of the Temanites reigned in his steed. And when Husham was dead, Hadad the son of Bedad, which smote Midian in the field of Moab, reigned in his steed. And the name of the city was Azeth. A little bit of a change in the name there. Verse 47. And when Hadad was dead, Samla of Masrika reigned in his steed. And when Samla was dead, Shaul of Rehoboth by the river reigned in his steed. And when Shaul was dead, Belhanan, the son of Akbor, reigned in his steed. And when Belhanan was dead, Hadad reigned in his steed. And the name of the city was Pai, P-A-I, or Pai. And his wife's name was Mehetabel, the daughter of Matred, the daughter of Mizahab. Verse 51. I'm actually doing pretty good with these names here. Hadad died also, and the dukes of Edom were Duke Timnah, Duke Aliah, Duke Jeth Jetheth, spoke too soon, uh, Duke Aholabama, is that it? Aholabama, <laughs> Duke Elah, Duke Penan, Duke Kenaz, Duke Tima, Duke Mibzar, Duke Magdiel, and Duke Iram. These are the Dukes of Edom. <laughs> Chapter 2. <laughs> These are the sons of Israel, which would also be called Jacob, Reuben, Simeon, Levi, and Judah, and Issachar, and Zebulun, Dan, Joseph, and Benjamin, Naphtali, Gad, and Asher. Verse 3, we're talking about the descendants of Judah. The sons of Judah were Ur, and Onan, and Shelah, which three were born unto him of the daughter of Shua the Canaanitess. And Ur, the firstborn of Judah, was evil in the sight of the Lord, and he slew him. Note. Well, it's obvious here Judah is dealt with first. In fact, he was to be the chief and ruling tribe of the twelve, and the Messiah was to actually come through him later. You can find that in Genesis chapter 49, verse 8 through 12. The evil thing that caused the Lord to slay Ur was not recorded either in Genesis chapter 38, where this account is given, or elsewhere in the scripture. It could have been the same sin for which God killed Onan, as in Genesis 38, 8 through 10. Oh, that of refusing to have children. Incorporated in that, Ur was the firstborn of Judah and thereby in the lineage of the coming Messiah. The evidence is he didn't care anything for that and Satan endeavored to use him to stop the very plan of God. Therefore, the reason for the actions of the Lord was to smite him for just not even caring. Uh, what it boils down to is this. The devil is basically trying to make God into a liar by corrupting the seed line which through the Messiah was to come through by either not having any seed line, such as killing the Jewish people off entirely, or corrupting them with uh, Nephilim and Anakim giants, which were mutated freaks of uh, the fallen angels, half-breeds you would call them, and... Uh, just basically trying to corrupt that seed line and get it to where things are so messed up that Jesus couldn't actually come through that, which is what God promised in Genesis chapter 3. I think it was verse 15. But anyways, uh, where are we? We're going to have to pick up in chapter 2, verse 4 of the book of First Chronicles. Thank you and God bless.